Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you our third quarter homeschool review and let you know how everything has been going. So if you enjoy this type of content and other homeschool and lifestyle content, please remember to subscribe and let's get into it. All right, so it's crazy to me that the third quarter is done. <laughs> I'm like, we only have one quarter left. We still do some summer school type stuff. But, you know, we'll take a little break and then do some more summer school stuff before we start full blown back in the fall. But I'm like, this year is almost done, which is crazy to me. So I just thought I'd get on here and mention a few things. Most things are, you know, the same. There's nothing super crazy to report, but I thought I'd just mention a few things. So first off, we started Language Arts 5. I might have mentioned this in the last video. I didn't check, I can't remember. So my two oldest kids that are in fifth and sixth grade right now are both doing this together. They're almost on the same lesson. Somehow she always gets ahead of my older son. And so they're working their way through this. We'll probably still be working on it into the fall. Like we for sure will. <laughs> and then maybe, you know, we switched this year around January. So we're going to try to speed it up over the summer and get through most of it. But I don't think that we will. So we'll see where we are when fall time comes. But I wanted to mention it because I really like the watercolor aspect of it. I know not all kids like to watercolor and my oldest son, he enjoys it to an extent, but he likes to throw a fit about it. <laughs> but this is my daughter that did this. She's a 10 and a half, she'll be 11 pretty soon. But she made this one, they're talking about illuminations and just listened to an audiobook. Which again, I just love the Good and the Beautiful's language arts because it's so dynamic. There's so many different things that it's exposed to that I just can't give them. And I haven't been able to when we tried to do separate curriculum. So I really like how, you know, it's, there's geography, there's audiobooks, you know, for listening comprehension, there's grammar, there's this art, you know, last year's level four was more pastels and this year's more watercolor. I just really like how it is so dynamic. So she did this, which I thought was cool. They did another illumination um, watercolor. It was just the letter, like an S. So this one I think was a little bit more of an advancement to as they learned more about them and what they involved. So that was that for her. And then I think last time I mentioned my son was almost done with his math four, my third grader. And so he did start math five and he is, he's cruising through it. <laughs> I'm sure one day, he'll hit some math that he doesn't understand as well and it'll take some time for him, but I'm not sure when that day will come. And so he is cruising through this already and will be ready for math sticks possibly by the end of summer. So we'll see how that goes. And then speaking of math sticks, my son ripped the page. <laughs> he, he was a little mad, so he <laughs> threw the book. But he just finished this today, actually. He finished all the reviews and the course test at the end. And so I already have uh, last set level seven. I tried to mix those together, level seven. <laughs> Who knows what I was trying to say. So I have math seven, and so he's gonna start on that next week for our school, and that'll be exciting. And so next, at the end of next quarter, and kind of our end of year review of everything, I can tell you a little bit more about it as we have started it. So those are some of the, like their core curriculum things we've been working on and how they're going. And those are the only things that have changed up just a little bit the last like two months. All right, so then everything else is basically group work. And I just wanted to mention real quick, I've shown these books before. They're kind of just simple meditation things that we do for our group work in the morning. And they only take like 30 seconds to a minute. That's just explaining it. But it's like count to five and has a little exercise that I'll read through and it teaches some breaths you can take or some things you can do maybe when you're a little bit anxious or when you're really busy. And so I had gotten this one, Peaceful Like a Panda, maybe last fall. And we're, we've gone through it almost two times. We're like halfway through it again. And so since we had gone through this one so many times, I was like, okay, we'll try this one again. But I really like it. This one is divided a little bit differently. Like some of it is more do this in the morning and do this in the evening. You know, this is a morning thing. This is a bedtime thing, stuff like that. So like this one, Sleepy Mouse. And then I'll have some for breakfast as well. 
and then it always has a little explanation at the beginning so like this says rise and shine and then it's gonna have you know what little breathing exercises it has but then it has an explanation for why this section is here like do you have a hard time getting up in the morning like these things might help you so we've just been going through that like it's just simple meditation type things teaching my kids you know take a few minutes to breathe you know obviously we're not super good at it through the rest of the day we try and i try to remind them to take deep breaths but that's just something i wanted to mention because it is helpful and i like doing it because it also reminds me <laughs> to breathe and take deep breaths and to be a good example of that so there you go there's that the next thing i want to mention is our read alouds and so we finished we if you had watched my last one we didn't get as much reading done as i'd like to in our second quarter because i was sick and my husband and son were in china for two weeks and so we finished gathering blue at the beginning of this quarter and we really liked it i actually really liked i for this is a like companion to the giver it's a whole series but I'm like, I feel like the books could be read individually, but they make more sense together. So this book doesn't mention anything about the giver, but then this book ties the two books together. And so, you know, it's like I said, I feel like you could read them individually and it'd be totally fine. You know, it's hard because I already have the giver in my head and I have for years because I read it so long ago. And so it's hard for me to know if you could completely read them isolated and it still makes sense because I haven't done that. But I feel like they are enough separate that you could. So we read this one, like we finished reading this one. My plan was to finish reading this book. We just haven't gotten around to it. This is about September 11th. We, I think we're about halfway through it. And I think it's interesting. I really wanna know like where the story's going but i also just don't love the writing <laughs> i don't think it's written super well and it kind of bothers me a little bit so we haven't gotten back to this i don't know if we will this year or not maybe we'll see what happens i'll keep you updated like if we finish it i'll let you know but like i said we read messenger this is like the shortest one out of the whole series we're now on the fourth one which is the last one and it's sun that's what it's called and it's the biggest it's the thickest one so i'm like we're gonna have to cruise through this to get through it <laughs> in this quarter anyway it's like is it three it's 400 pages i don't know it's really big it's a big book so we really liked this one as well. My kids were like, keep reading when we got toward the end. They just wanted me to keep reading. So anyway, it's been good. And it has a lot of heavier topics because it's talking about all these dystopias. And so it's something my kids are like, wait, why? Or why does it function that way? And then it's also a good opportunity to talk about in some places in the world, there are societies that still live this way or that kind of live this way or that have similarities to this. And so it's just a good opportunity to discuss a little bit like heavier topics with them and th this book as well. So our geography curriculum has read alouds that go with it that kind of encompass the area we're talking about. And so we were talking about some of the like so southeastern states and that area. So the Appalachian or Appalachian Mountains, I hear, <laughs> I heard it both ways. <laughs> But my husband said Appalachian is the way that they say it's supposed to be said. So I don't know. Anyways, but this is talking about the Cherokee Trail of Tears, but in a little bit more like simplified kid-friendly version. It's called Soft Rain. So it came with our geography curriculum. You, you could buy the read-alouds that go with it. And so every day you just basically read a chapter to get done with it by the end of the section or whatever. So we finished this and this was probably one of my favorite books we've read so far out of our geography curriculum, just because it was like, it's historical fiction. It's more, I don't know, it was just more real life. And my kids also, again, were just like, what? Like people did that? And being able to talk about it, I just felt like it was really good. So we had some really good discussions, some really good read alouds this last quarter that we all really enjoyed. All right, and then for science, we finished marine biology. So that was a lot of fun. My kids enjoy going through this. And then they always, my oldest son, he watched the Octonauts a lot when he was littler. And so he was like, oh, I know this from this, from the Octonauts. I know this, I know this, I know this. So anyways, it's educational. 
<laughs> so he knew a lot of things about marine biology and so that was a lot of fun and we're actually i was hoping to go to the aquarium before this video so maybe i could insert footage into it but we haven't gone yet and we are planning to go next weekend we're going to go on a quick like family trip it's just like a few hours away <laughs> that we're going but the aquarium is like an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes away so we're going to try to hit the aquarium while we're down there <laughs> and so that is kind of the goal so hopefully we'll be able to go that was my thought with this unit in mind is like oh we can go to the aquarium when we're done and that will just be fun like they can see all this stuff more in real life this so this out of all of the like good and the beautiful science units we've done i don't feel like had as many experiments it still had some and at the beginning it talked about water currents and everything to help you understand how the oceans work and all that kind of stuff and so you did some experiments with ice cubes and hot water but other than that like there was a few things here and there but it doesn't lend itself as well to that kind of stuff so it's like understandable but i still feel like it was well done it was just a little bit different than some of the other ones again i love these books they're so helpful you know they had this section where it's talking about fish non-fish so they tape them one of my kids favorite things was this was one of the experiments that i had forgotten about until i opened this was a shark's sense of smell and so you put lemon juice and water in a cup and then you take you know you have eight cups or something like that and they all have a little bit of water already in them and you take like a teaspoon of the lemon the like more concentrated lemon and water and put it in the next one and then you take a teaspoon of that cup put it in the next one so then when you get to eight it's you know like so so diluted and then you go through as a human being who smells you know with their nose and with like air <laughs> you know not like um marine life or sharks is what it's talking about that have i don't know if they're like little holes i'm not a marine biologist or super familiar with the water i should be my parents are scuba divers and really really love to scuba dive but i am not so anyways it you know the water comes in and they pull out the smells out of the water and obviously that's not how we smell and so we you know we were supposed to go over the cups and then say when we could start to smell the lemon and it wasn't until like the second or first cup right the ones with the most lemon juice were the ones we could smell where some sharks can smell all the way at eight you know where it's like hardly any for, like we can't smell it at all and there's hardly any lemon juice in it at all but they can still pick it out or like blood you know in the water so that was really fun for my kids so there was still a few really good experiments in there that my kids enjoyed it just again doesn't lend itself to quite as many especially when we don't like have access to water where we live like that <laughs> like an ocean and a lot of marine biology and we just don't have access to it and then we started safety we're still working on this one i think we're on lesson let's see six so we actually are halfway through with this one and this one's been fun it has a lot of more like get out of your seat types of activities you know because if you're talking about fire safety okay walk through your house figure out where all these things are how to make an evacuation plan describe some different things so that was fun you know what and so that's kind of how it is with some of these activities get up move like with earthquake what would you do go through your house and figure out where should you go if an earthquake happens and you're in this room and that kind of stuff so we still have to finish this one and then we might get through one more unit of science we'll see <laughs> we'll see since we have a few little vacations coming up it's kind of hard i'm like I mean, we'll see where we go but so far so good we've really been enjoying it all right and then the last thing i want to mention just again is geography curriculum i decided to switch a few things we're not switching the curriculum we're still using not grass i enjoy it to an extent i feel like the information is fun like they pick good fun things to share so usually we split it like we do one state a week and the first day you know, there's two lessons per state so we'll do one on tuesday and one on thursday and the first one usually is a little bit more like here's the capital this is something that happens there here's a few other things that maybe you should know about that place or what it's famous for and then the next chapter about it for like that we do on thursdays is usually a story about somebody from history so i feel like it's all very like informative and fun especially for kids it keeps them entertained and they like listening to it it's not super long either 
And then their work workbook also is very helpful that goes along with it. But I was also like, sometimes it's really hard to learn geography just by doing book work all the time. And so on Tuesdays, we're gonna do our book work because it's really not that much longer for us to just do both days in one. So we're gonna do that. And then on Thursdays, we're gonna play more games. Some of it might end up not just being geography, we'll kind of see, but I have this new geography game that we've played once and hopefully we'll play it again tomorrow, but this is a trivia challenge. So this is world geography, not just United States geography. But my, we have a science one like this and my kids really like it. And so far they've liked this one. Today we played Road Trip the USA. And that one's also a really good one, especially if you're doing United States geography, which we are, because then it's asking questions specifically about the United States and my kids are looking at a map, becoming familiar with where the states are. So I feel like both of them combined might be a better experience and also might just not be so mundane <laughs> or repetitive. You know, we'll get a little bit of variety in our geography. So that's the plan. It just started. <laughs> so I'll have to let you know at the end of next quarter how it goes because I really don't know for sure yet. But today was our first day doing it and I think that it went well. So that's kind of the plan for geography. All right, so that's my third quarter review of how homeschool has been going. I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below and let me know how everything's going for you. Are you feeling like kind of done with school for the year already? Like just like, oh, we still have another quarter or you can't believe you have another quarter or just things that you've been loving, things that have worked well. I'd love to hear all of it. And remember to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time.